is Chris Smith from The Guardian. I'm with Brendan Ike, the co-founder and CTO of Mozilla. We're at the MEF CEO Summit and uh, we're going to ask a few questions. My first question was just to really to ask you how, how the uh, Firefox OS uh, project came about and, and what your plans are for the future. Sure. So uh, some few of us at Mozilla a little over a year ago were frustrated with uh, the closing of mobile by having vertical platforms, platforms that lock you into a particular app store and native application stack, native programming language support that's not the same on other browsers or other mobile devices. For example, Apple has a fabulous stack, but it's, it's all about Apple and it's Objective-C and Cocoa and Core Graphics. You write an application that way, it's not going to run on Android. If you write an application on Android, you're using Java, probably, maybe using the web, but there are problems with how well it works on a lot of the older Androids that are out there. So we thought, we need to do something that's more than just a browser. Why not make a mobile operating system where there's only the web above the sort of Linux kernel layer? And we set out to do that, and it was surprisingly easy. It was also lighter weight, so it used less memory. It fit on smaller devices. We could see a cost savings for users there. And th this all comes back to the Mozilla mission. We're a nonprofit, and our mission is to preserve and advance change and innovation on the internet and on the web in the interest of users and users. Uh, benefit above all other agendas, above any uh, business agenda or operating system or search business. All these things are good things, but the users have primary interests that aren't necessarily coincident with those. It isn't always in the user's interest to give up their privacy, for instance, whereas it might be in the interest of someone doing a web service. So in, in looking at the mobile space and how fragmented it was becoming between especially iOS and Android, we thought it's time for a web operating system. So how do you see uh, Firefox OS competing in the mobile marketplace? Where, where, do, you, where do you see it as, as part of the, the mobile mix? So we had good inbound business interest right away. And you know I'm reminded, and people often ask about uh, Palm Web OS and the HP after that. And I think it was a little early, and I think it didn't, uh, Palm didn't know how to work the standards bodies. It didn't have leverage in the standards bodies like we do, thanks to Firefox desktop share. So they made something that used the web languages, but was not much different from any other proprietary system. It, it was a complex Palm-only system. It wasn't a standard many people can implement. Uh, what we're trying to do is partner with carriers and OEMs who increasingly find they're in a zero-sum game with Android and they've lost the user relationship to Google Play. And of course, Apple doesn't leave them with much at all. So the carriers in particular have some advantages. Um, much maligned, you know, there's a concern in the States about net neutrality, but the carriers are not just a utility, they're also able to innovate, they can do direct to bill, they can do their own over the top services, and we're interested in having a vibrant competitive space there, not just a locked in space. So the OEMs also, I think, are, are feeling you know margins going down over time. Samsung is doing very well, but everybody else seems to be suffering if you look at their, their earnings guidance. And yet, I think there's room to sell more smartphones to the next two and a half billion people who buy phones. They won't buy feature phones, if we can help it, they'll buy Firefox OS phones. So, um, so the the idea with Firefox OS is that it combines the, the benefits of the native, uh, the native sort of uh, uh, the, the phone and the, the sensors and that kind of thing with the benefits of open web. Yes. Uh, how is that going to change the way that people build content? So that's where I'm most excited because when you start to get into these emerging markets that we're looking at, like in, in Latin America and Brazil, where I was two weeks ago, you see a lot of creativity that's that's ready to be unleashed. And a lot of people there do know how to program the web. They do know about JavaScript and HTML5 and CSS. I was just at Brazil JS uh, down in Porto Alegre. And there's just great developer knowledge there. All they need are the devices. And of course, they could learn and, and try to build an Android or an Apple app, but then they're doing two things or three things. Their cost of business goes up. And they have to distribute those things by getting them into the store, past the gatekeeper, and then t at a high placement or to be discovered. So we think the web is going to unleash the creativity of the emerging markets and developers around the world. So, so are we going to see an amplification of the web, do you think? Is, is that the future of the way that content is going to be consumed? Uh, is, is that a good thing? I think so. I, I, I look at things like WebRTC, where we're partnering with Google to make two-way or n-way uh, real-time communication possible. This is something that people still reach for Skype for, which is a fine tool, but this is something that the internet can handle, and it should be an open standard. It should work in your browser, on your phone. It should work everywhere. You should have lightweight, easy ways of not just sharing uh, voice and uh, video, but also data that's associated with it, presentations or collateral materials you want to share when you're having a, a video chat. Brendan, thank you very much. You're welcome.